But I think we should remind ourselves of all those elements that are not included in 242. 242 does not speak of a Palestinian people or a Palestinian state. 242 does not mention Jerusalem. 242 does not refer to a so-called right of return of the Palestinians. It speaks only of a just solution of the refugee problem, not even a Palestinian refugee problem, but we'll hear more about the refugee issue in a separate presentation here today. It doesn't speak of direct negotiations. That was taboo to the Arabs in 1967. May I remind you that the resolution was adopted two or three months after the three famous Khartoum knows. No recognition of Israel, no negotiations with Israel, no peace with Israel. As a result, 242 doesn't even mention the possibility of peace treaties. It speaks of a termination of belligerency and then also makes a brief reference to the right of every state in the region to live in peace, fact, peace de facto, not peace de jure. But of course, center stage has been taken by the territorial provisions of 242. And one gets the impression, as Dr. Gold has actually pointed out, that many of the people who speak or write about 242 are not familiar with the language of the resolution and its legislative history. The motto of these people is usually land for peace. Nowhere in the resolution does that term occur? And they go even further. They say full withdrawal of Israel from the territories captured in 67 for full peace. Some of them even suggested that a full withdrawal of Israel must be a prelude to negotiations, peace negotiations. It's a kind of automatic clause in the resolution.